Well, it's getting a bit cold in Finland now, and I've got a nice video for you today. My own car, battery failure. Let's go. Hello, everyone. So, a bit of a practical fault find for you today. My own car, the old i3, we've got a massive issue, and I'll show you what it is right away. Don't panic if you get this battery one, and I'm going to show you what it is, because I'm going to have to go and buy a battery probably today. I have to say, when I was a mechanic at Schmiedman, this is the most common fault I saw, especially in the winter time. This video today, we'll just show you that you don't need to panic. Just take a few steps and you'll soon be on the road again. You're probably wondering why it's pushing out 15 volts there. Well, I'm at the cigarette lighter because this is a really unique, handy place to go. I'm just grounding it to the casing, you can see, and I'm at positive probes at the top. That tells me that that electrical machine electronics is pushing out a massive amount of voltage. I don't like that, really. It's a little concerning to me, to be fair, actually. And it's growing, isn't it? That's a bit extremely worrying to me. Right, the first thing we're gonna to have to do before I get my tools, I just wanna basically disconnect. I wanna disconnect the high voltage connector. The reason I wanna do this is quite simple. There we are, 11.82, it's dropping like a bugger, it's knackered that, I can tell before I test it. The reason I'm checking this now before I strip it is purely and simply, which is why we have to disconnect that safety plug there is there'll be current going through that from the electrical machine electronics it's like trying to pull a battery cable off with an engine running the alternator feeding into it you'll get hell of a spark jump you'll blow something up and you could even burn yourself so that's why we do that so the next thing is you pull the battery terminal off negative one's okay just take that off and check the battery and that's it then i'll go and buy a battery i think we've got 12 volts there now i'm doing exactly the same test but with the electrical machine electronics now not there's no alternator putting any charging usually it's not bad is it but that doesn't tell you the full story but 12 volts usually a good one is usually about 12.5 12.6 so i guess the battery's old and goose but this is a good check because when you see where the battery is on these you'll realize this is a very handy test point um, these you can turn this i think toyota should just be like this and you can pull this off but watch you don't lose the o-ring it always you always lose the o-ring for some reason in this case i haven't done magic the battery on these is in a very very shitty place as you can see it's there and I'm going to basically struggle. Horrendous problem with corrosion because of the Finnish winters. And that's the negative terminal. And I need to basically strip the front out just to get to the positive side. So that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to check it with our King Ball N battery tester, which is just here. And we're going to check the battery state of health. Right, so we're on the test now. You can see it, my hands are now freezing. It's minus 15 and I can't really feel my hands now. No, it's minus 10, so it's gone down a bit. So let's just check this out now. normal it's lost a third of its capacity so it's due a change at the end of the day showing 12.16 i would beg to differ it's that much that's the internal resistance it's only got 26 percent state of charge so it might be this is the trouble with battery test as you see state of l 50 percent. it's not normal is it that's what i don't like about this tester so basically it's knackered that battery so yeah we're going to get a new battery let's go to the shop state of l 100 I think this King Ball ends lying to me a bit. But anyway, I'll try another one. At least I've got one, innit? Well, I guess this is the future. I've just been to Moltenet, if you can just see where I am. In Espo, not far from where I live. I got one, I'll show you in a minute. MTX Energy. It cost me 75 quid, BMW one's 200. I think more from dealer. Schmiedman sell it for, I think, 209. But, like with Schmiedman, it's 11 day delivery. And I'm not going to wait 11 working days to get a battery when I need to start a new job on Monday. Unfortunately, as we saw, it's only 25% charged. They've just done a test for me on this machine, which was absolutely pathetic. Bosch one. It wasn't like my little tester, which I've got with me here. It was a, a Bosch one. You had to put the actual battery number in. My little tester tells you exactly the state of play. The Bosch one was absolute pants. All it did was, well, I'll show you in a minute. It's absolutely useless nonsense. All it is is just for warranty reasons. So that <clears throat> if you come back morning, so that's what they give you. Look, Varatava means it's okay. Basically, that's all you need to worry about. Yes, it's a motorbike battery. That's it. That's all you get. Battery 131 EMEA. Gives you a date and a time for a warranty and that's it that's all they give you well i've just about got to the battery and it was a complete pain in the bottom 
as you can probably well imagine. You can't got to just wrestle them out really like that. Anyway, I'm going to wrestle this out and get it upstairs and we're going to strip it all. Strip these stupid legs off. It's quite loose as well. Like, can you see how it's moving? It's common on these, even after lock tightening. Well, here we are in the Johnson YouTube studio and unfortunately we've got a seized on component. But thank God the wife told me last week actually buy some WD-40. So as you can see, the MTX, there isn't really much difference in size. Oh, my can't lift that with one hand. I would have done years ago. Oh, there we are. Oh, my God, that's heavy. And it's good because it's an AGM battery. Somewhat bigger than the BMW one by one amp hour and 30 amps. As you can see. CCA 200, it says there. But as you can see, that's the actual size. From BMW, it's over 200 quid. Schmiedman do it for 209, but it'll be 11, days, 11 working days. I'm not going to wait three weeks. So this is all I've got. It's close enough. Let's see if we can swap it over. Okay, I always say WD-40. Nothing as good as it. Rusted to buggery, that was. Just the case now of putting this in here. Like so, and then build it up. All right, dudes, there's just one thing left to do. Let's put our safety terminal back on. And let's now read it, erase the fault codes and call the battery. So, original battery type, according to the vehicle order, is a 20 amp hour AGM, registered 20 amp hour. Well, we can't really have higher capacity from that, I don't think. Well, you probably could, but we'll, we'll check it out. I don't think you can. Yeah, you need to enter it in the vehicle. You've got to retrofit it. Well, we're not going to do that. What you can't do, usually, with things like this, is you cannot put in a, a um, smaller battery and then leave it as it is because it'll with the battery management system through the intelligent battery sensor on the negative terminal if you've got a smaller battery capacity to start with let's say 220 amp instead of 300, 300 then it's always going to think that the battery's being discharged you see which is always an issue isn't it uh register battery exchange same capacity and that's now going to exchange that into the memory with the mileage and everything. And then it knows then that we've got a new battery. So it'll reset all the uh, Terminal 30 deactivation counters and stuff like that. So there you are. That's all done, isn't it? Fantastic. Well, there you all go. <laughs> it's about minus 10 now. And my hands, if you've never worked in places like the Nordics, you don't feel it eventually. It gets that cold, it goes numb. But then, you know, it's frostbite territory, basically. So you have to be just really, really, really careful, essentially, that you get in. So I'm going to go in now. Well, if you ever see that message on your car, don't panic. That's usually all it is. For more advanced fault finding tips like these, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video.